So, we've seen on the Internet Connected Wheelchair a range of network technologies to transfer data from sensors to devices of growing sizes and capabilities up to the Internet network and the cloud. This is a typical application example of the Internet of Things, the IoT. The Internet of Things would have been coined by Kevin Ashton in 1999. At least that is what he describes in this RFID journal article of 2009. He recalls the 90s when Internet diagrams were including servers and routers while missing the most important of routers, us, people. The internet is about disseminating information, but people have limited time, attention and accuracy. We are simply not good at capturing data about things in the real world. Thus, the promise of the internet of things is about making us a bit superhuman, helping us capture data from the real world onto the internet. To do so, there are three key elements, basically. First, physical things are identified on the internet via various technologies, such as RFID tags that we can find on, on closing or QR codes. Second, a thing refers to any physical object attached to a unique device that can connect as well as send and receive data through the internet. And the third element, the IoT extends the internet that we explored in the previous module, a global network of networks. In this video, we will explore the requirements that emerge from all these connected physical things similarly to other aspects of the product service system, we aim to specify the requirements that will influence our choices of network technologies. Let's use the seven dimensions of the product canvas and browse through some of the key questions we should consider. First, we have the user dimension, what relates to the people, systems, and devices interacting with the product. Here, I would like to zoom out a little bit and start with the purpose of the product. What are the characteristics of the users and what will they do with the product? It sounds like a generic question, but it can already help sketching our network requirements. Will it be moving or stationary? on the user or in the environment, continuously or temporarily active in a reactive or proactive way? Will it be used in a playful context or for a mission critical operation? As designer, these are questions which should be long answered when reaching the stage of network requirements, of course. It goes end to hand with the promise of the product, what must be delivered, what is critical for the success of the product, without which there will be no business, no customers. What about the energy required for the devices involved? Can they be plugged on a power socket or should they rely on batteries? This is important because Network communication can consume a significant amount of power. This is, of course, relative to the consumption of the product itself. For the connected speaker, it might represent most of its energy budget. For a connected oven, it would be barely noticeable. And finally, how big the device should be and is it actually an important factor? The electronic as well as the antenna required for some network technologies might not fit inside the casing of a small product or it could influence its shape and material. Let's move on the interface dimension. Here we look at the touch point 
between users, systems and devices. It is important to get a feeling of what is natural for the targeted users in the product context. Is the population mainly equipped with the latest smartphones and surrounded with connected devices? Or maybe the users and the expected operational conditions of the device are very diverse? Should the connected device be the single touch point? How agile users are with setting up network connection? Even more, are we trying to put our device in communication with other devices around? Maybe it is even a requirement. For example, a connected switch would need to talk to light bulbs around to switch them on and off. By the way, what is our development budget for this product? Because it might heavily influence the choice of our technology. When it comes to actions, the capabilities provided to the users, do we need a two-way channel? This ability for both ends of the network to initiate a communication. By design, some network technologies like LoRa only enable devices to send data. They can only receive data in response to data that they have sent themselves. The reason for such an approach might be to, to save energy or to ensure security. The capabilities provided to the users will also influence the amount of network interactions. So it is important to estimate the density of the devices connected to this network. How many devices per user? How many users? Will they be interacting continuously over time or peak times are to be expected? If the promise of the product service system relies on the quality of the network infrastructure, peak times should be considered as the reference density, even though it might represent only a, a small slice of the time. Then we have data. It is an important dimension because it is mainly what the network will transport. Here we often have a trade-off to make between transporting data and processing it locally. We refer to the data rate as the amount of data to be transported across the network per second. The device is the one sensing, collecting data. However, the device, the smartphone, sometimes the local hub, as well as the server, all have abilities to process data. The device might have very limited capabilities but can do so without relying on any network. When dealing with data intensive sensors, such as cameras producing images or accelerometers, microphone with high frequency time series, data might be processed or pre-processed on the device to minimize the data sent to more powerful devices. It can be a trade-off between accuracy and network requirements, which brings us back to what is the most important for the product at hand. Similarly to the action dimension, the density is to be considered. Is interactions distributed continuously over time or are there peak times? For instance, a doorbell might only send a video stream when someone is at the door. As a business, what control do we want to offer to the users? An important benefit of connected products is the ability to collect data about how the user is using the product. For this action and data dimension must transit through the cloud. It is also important to investigate whether the user have control over the network infrastructure and if we want to leave that in the hand. For instance, a product connected to a home Wi-Fi router is exposed through the setting defined by each householder. 
On a campus, users do not have the control on the infrastructure and have to comply with ICD rules. Cost is an aspect which comes back here. Can we request the user to pay a monthly fee as part of their smartphone data plan or as a dedicated subscription? Shall this cost be included upfront in the cost of the product? Maybe data plans are not even an option because of the area or the willingness of users to subscribe. The question of interoperability also comes back here. In the interface dimension, it was about opening opportunities. Now it is more about closing them. Is it beneficial for the business model to give users the ability to use the product in interaction with other companies' products? We will dive into the business aspect in more detail in the upcoming model. We already covered many questions which can lead you to check what network infrastructure is already in place. In the user and interface dimensions for what users are comfortable with and for interoperability. Here, regarding the environment dimension, any existing infrastructure might be an asset to build on or a constraint that we need to deal with. Depending on the country or the context in which we design, some network technologies might not be allowed. This might be for interference reasons, such as some wireless technologies in, in a hospitals would not be permitted. An ICT department might also oppose any infrastructure creating interference with their own network technology already in place. There might be security standards that some network technology cannot satisfy. For the third time, the cost comes into play here. When a suitable network infrastructure is already in place, there might be a cost of using this infrastructure. Otherwise, we might come to the conclusion that a dedicated network infrastructure needs to be deployed. Finally, what are the indicators of service quality? When it comes to network technologies, for example, latency will play an important role for the user experience. Unless responsiveness is not an important part of the experience. In some context, priority might be to the security of the users, not allowing them to start a product remotely or having a fallback strategy when the network goes down if privacy is key, then slowing down the transport of data with a strong encryption mechanism might also be an acceptable solution. This is a whole lot of questions here. There are certainly even more, but hopefully it gives you enough starting points to sketch out the network requirements for your software-based product. Like a typical product specification, your network requirements need to be formulated, justified and prioritized. They should also be measurable. This measure can be a binary yes or no choice or a specific numerical value with a unit.